Salvete discipuli, this is help for your Latin studies in Henley First Year Latin, exercise number 153. Before we turn to that exercise, I want to just show you that there is a bit of reading here uh, leading up to it about direct reflexive pronouns. And in your grammar book, you'll notice that on, um, let's see, According to rules number 123 and 124, these are the first and second person personal pronouns. All of these forms can be reflexive. So those are, you would just use the same, mei would be of me or of myself, okay, and so on. So all of these um, first and second person pronouns can be reflexive. In the third person, it's different. The third person, we have to break it up by non-reflexive. So these are just he or him or her or she or it. And then there's different words that um, show us a reflexive third person. So these in the genitive, dative, accusative, and ablative would be translated of himself, to himself, himself as a direct object or um, by, with, himself, paired up with a um, preposition. And so that's what makes the third person personal pronouns just slightly different, that they separate out different words for non-reflexive and reflexive pronouns. Whereas in the first and second person, all of these forms can be used either way, reflexive or non-reflexive. Okay, so with that in mind, I'm gonna turn us into the book or in the book to page 137, where we find exercise 153. And just above it, we have some new vocabulary, which includes, it just says sui. And if I look in my grammar book, the blue book at rule number 127, we have sui, that's our genitive form. There is no nominative reflexive form because you would never start a sentence with the word himself. Um, that would always be used either as a direct object, indirect object, object of the preposition, or in a possessive um, way. Okay, so but never as a subject. So that's blank. When it says sui here, it's, it's intending for you to know all four of these forms. And so you'll want to memorize those according to rule number 127. We're also given a new adverb etiam, meaning also, and then we're also given um, a new conjunction for, which is enim. So make sure you brush up on your understanding of the word for. It can be used as a preposition. We've seen it. Um, it's often, in Latin, we would use the word pro, um, and that would be like on behalf of or in front of. I pray for Mary, I pray for my son, whatever, that would be pro on behalf of. That's a preposition. In this case, enim is the word for, and it's a conjunction. And so it's going to connect two like terms together, two independent clauses, two nouns, um, and so forth. So just be aware that the word for can be used, and you'll, you'll just have to kind of narrow in on what's going on in the sentence. It can be used to connect things together, then it's a conjunction to independent clauses, or it can be used as an object of, or as a preposition, and it will take an object of the preposition. So if, if there's a noun that directly comes, or that comes directly after it, and it's saying you're doing something for someone or something, um, then it's gonna be a preposition. Okay, so when we look at exercise number 153, number one, we're given the English sentence, we want to translate this to Latin. And it says, we often pray for ourselves. So we see a reflexive pronoun, we see the word for, it's followed by a noun or pronoun. So this is our object of the preposition, which means this is a preposition. We could, we could substitute that word for with the words on behalf of. We, we often pray on behalf of ourselves and it 
it's kind of weird to say it that way, but you can and it makes sense. And then we have our verb pray connected with this pronoun we, so that's who we're talking about. That's our person and number, it's first person plural. And then often is an adverb, which is modifying when do we pray? Often, okay? And so we're just gonna add that adverb in. Um, okay, so pr let's put our verb at the end as we normally would in Latin. So I'm gonna skip over that. And I'm also going to pair it with the adverb that modifies it. So I'm going to skip over that. And I'm going to start our sentence with our preposition for. Pro. Okay. And then pro for ourselves. Well, that's going to agree with our subject. If it's reflexive, it's going to reflect back to the um, pronoun that started it like the subject so we're looking at a first person plural form that would um go with this preposition so it's going to be in the ablative so first person plural ablative nobis and if i look across i see it can mean ourselves okay so pro nobis For ourselves, now I'm going to go, I'm going to pair together our, our pronoun and verb because that, that ending will tell us the person and number, right? We. So now I'm going to give you our adverb often. It's saipe. And then we pray. And that is the present tense. And so, and our word for pray is oro, orare, orawi, oratus. So we're going to take that oro and we're going to make it a present tense, first person plural ending. Okay. Ora mus. Mus means we. Okay, so that's our first person plural ending. There's no past tense, there's no future tense, it is present tense, so we will not have a tense indicator, a BI or a BA here, and so it's just oramus. Pro nobis saipe oramus. Okay, and so you just want to go through um, sentence by sentence. They're pretty short just to get you um, acclimated to using those reflexive pronouns in the sentences appropriately. Um, I hope this has been helpful to you. Have a great day.